By the end of this lesson, you should be able to determine if a relation is a function, and you should also be able to define functions in terms of the relationship between the domain and the range, and determine if a relation is a function from tables, graphs, mappings, and verbal descriptions. So let's get started. Before we jump into identifying a function, it's important for us to understand what this word relation means. But we know relation is simply a type of relationship. So what are some relationships that you may experience in your everyday life? Well, there are parent-child relationships. We have relationships between your teachers and students. We have sibling relationships. Relationships between coaches and players if you're an athlete. If you're dating, you might have a relationship between a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And all of these relationships are different in the context in which they are presented. Well, in math, a relation is simply how different sets of data are related to each other. So the type of relationship that they have. And just like in personal relationships and math, one piece of data is dependent on another. So in a parent-child relationship, the child would be dependent on the parent to, to supply their basic needs. And in a teacher-student relationship, the student would be dependent on the teacher to provide quality instruction. And just like in these personal relationships and math, we have a dependent variable, uh, which depends or relies on what we call the independent variable. So what is a function? Well, function is a special type of relationship where each domain, each independent variable, is paired with exactly one range, one dependent variable. So simply, each x is paired with exactly one y. This means that we cannot use the same x value twice to get out two different y values. So I can't have the same x going to two different y values. Well, how do we identify a function? Well, we can identify a function from ordered pairs. Again, checking the ordered pairs, we just want to make sure that the x values don't repeat. We could look at a table. So here, we're looking at this table. We see, again, we're looking at the x values, and we want to make sure that they don't repeat. So negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, they're all different, so this would be considered a function. If we're looking at a mapping diagram, we want to make sure that there's no domains, there's no x's that have more than one arrow coming off of them. They should each be mapped to exactly one number, so that means that there should only be one arrow coming off of them. So in this, in this mapping diagram, this would be considered a function. If we're looking at graphs, we would do what we call the vertical line test, which we'll talk about more in the next slide. If we're looking at equations, you could either graph the equation and then look at the graph to see if that graph is a function, or you could plug in, substitute in those x values, your uh, independent variables, your domain, and see if you get out uh, the same range or different ranges for each one. If we're talking about a verbal description, you're really just reasoning your way through the problem. Could, we, could an independent variable be paired with more than one dependent variable? So let's talk about this vertical line test a little bit more. The vertical line test is when we place a vertical line on our graph. You could draw it, you could use a straight edge such as a ruler or the edge of your paper, but you're gonna place the vertical line on your graph and you're gonna slide it throughout the graph and you're checking for one thing. You're checking to see if it intersects in only one place and if that's the case, then we would call it a function. But if that vertical line intersects in two places at the same time, or multiple places at the same time, then we would say that it is not a function. So if we're looking off to the side here, off to our equation right here, this function, this graph, this line, this red line here would be a function because it passes the vertical line test. When I put my vertical line, my ruler, on my graph, we can see that it only crosses, it only intersects at one spot. If it intersects at more than one spot, you'll know. So here is a here is another function that we have, or another graph that we have. If I were going to do the vertical line test here, so I take a vertical line and I draw it on my graph, so just pretend like that's a vertical line. Notice that here it intersects in two spots. So not one spot, but it intersects two times, multiple places on this graph, so this would not be considered a function. All right, so let's look at some examples. So let's look at this first set of ordered pairs. Is this first set of ordered pairs a function? Well, if we look, we see that we have a four, we have an x that's three, we have an x that's negative two, and we have an x that's four. 
oh no, we have two x values that are the same, and they're going to a different y value. So this would not be considered a function. When we look at the second set of order pairs, we have negative 2, 2, 8, 3, and 7. All the x's are different, so this would be considered a function. When we look at this mapping diagram, remember that we're looking to see are the x's, are the domains, being mapped to only one range. So they should only have one arrow coming off of them. So negative 4, negative 1, 1, and 3 each have one arrow going off of them. So this would be considered a function. Note that it does not matter that negative 6 has more than one arrow pointing to it, that it, that it has more than one x value. We're just worried about the x values having more than one y. When we look at this one down here, we see that negative we see that four has two arrows coming off of it, which means that four is being mapped to two different values. So four, so this mapping diagram here would not be considered a function. When we look at this table, I'm going to move over to this table. Again, we're looking at the x values. So we have negative three, negative two, three, and four. They're all different, so this table would be considered a function. And when we look at this table, we see that 2 is repeated, and so this would not be a function. When we look at our graph here, this top graph, if I were to draw a vertical line throughout this graph, we would see that it does not pass the vertical line test because it crosses in two spots. So this would not be considered a function. But if we look at this graph, if I draw a vertical line anywhere on this graph, it's only going to intersect in one spot, so this would be considered a function. When we're looking at equations, again, we can graph these equations. Uh, we can plug in some x values. We can make up some values and plug them in to see if um, they would get out a, uh, if we get out different y values. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to go through each of these equations, and we're going to determine if they are a function or not a function. So this first equation, 3x plus 4, is a function because it is a linear equation. When we look at y equals 3x, 3 to the x, this is also a function because this is an exponential equation. And x squared plus 2x equals 16 is also a function because this would be a quadratic equation. These three equations are, these three types of functions, linear, exponential, and quadratic, are all are, are the three different types of functions that we're going to focus on this year. Linear functions just have an x, no exponent. Exponential functions, the exponent is the x. And in quadratic functions, the highest exponent is 2 in that function. So you'll know it's a quad you'll know if it's linear, exponential, or quadratic by looking at the x and determining the exponent. When we look at this third, this last one, however, it is not a function because when I graph x equals y squared, this is the type of graph that we get, and we would see that it does not pass the vertical line test. All right, uh, on a separate sheet of paper or in your notebook, jot down the following. A function differs from a relation because, again, subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications as new videos are released, and I'll see you in the next one.